1948 saw the nationalization of Britain's four railway companies into a single government-operated entity, and Flying Scotsman was renumbered once again to 6103, due to all LNR engine numbers being bumped up to 60,000. British Railway saw a lot of change for Flying Scotsman. Originally, the apple green color was retained, but the engine was soon repainted into the BR Express blue livery, which it held until 1954 when repainted Brunswick green, which would stay that way for the remainder of Flying Scotsman's career on the British Railways. Other modifications include the replacement of the funnel to include a second chimney, conversion to left-hand drive, and the addition of German-style smoke deflectors. As steam is being phased out by diesels, Flying Scotsman was originally meant to be scrapped along with the rest of the aging A3s, with engines like Mallard intended to be preserved due to being seen as Sir Nigel Gresley's finest achievements. However, the efforts and passion of one man prevented Flying Scotsman's destruction, and that man was Alan Hegler. Flying Scotsman's revenue service days ended on January 14, 1963, just a month and ten days shy of its 40th birthday. It seemed all was lost in the locomotive scrapped in Doncaster, the same place where it was born. However, the saving grace was businessman and railway enthusiast Alan Pegler, who with the support of Prime Minister Howard Wilson, forked in the £3,500 that was needed to buy the engine from BR. After 18 months of negotiation, Pegler finally bought the engine in 1963, the same year of the engine's retirement. Pegler spent large amounts of money restoring the engine to as close as original condition as possible. Painting it in apple green once more, removing the smoke deflectors, and retaining the single chimney funnel, and giving a corridor tender that was the same type as the one carried in the late 1920s and early 30s. From 1963 onward, Flying Scotsman ran enthusiast specials and rail tours all across Great Britain, gaining international fame and attention, and for brief time was the only steam engine on the British mainline. This fame and publicity came at a cost though. The engine became so beloved that the chairman of BR, Richard Beeching, sacked Pegler from the BR board due to the fact that an old steam engine was gaining so much publicity while he was trying to modernize and streamline British Rail. Despite this, Pegler's ambitions remained unbridled, and soon with the support of Prime Minister Wilson, Flying Scotsman was able to go to the United States and Canada on a grand tour that lasted from 1969 until 1972 crossing many U.S. states and Canadian cities at a totage of 15,400 miles traveled, participating in many events along the way. Unfortunately, hard times came, and by the time Flying Scotsman reached San Francisco for an event called British Week, Pegler was 132,000 pounds in debt and declared himself practically penniless. For a brief time, Flying Scotsman was stranded in the U.S., being stored in the U.S. Army's Sharp Depot in Lathrop, California. As Pegler was rebuilding his fortune by working on a P&O cruise ship on the way to England, Flying Scotsman experienced yet another saving grace. Horticulturist and steam enthusiast Alan Bloom phoned the businessman William McAlpine in January 1973, requesting that he buy the engine and bring it home. And soon enough, McAlpine did. After dealing with several attorneys and paying the creditors Pegler couldn't pay, Flying Scotsman was bought and the following month was shipped home to England. For the next 23 years, Flying Scotsman would thrive on the way of McAlpine. The highlight of it all was a grand tour of Australia in 1988 to 1989, where it would meet not only several Australian steam engines, but also its old Great Western rival Pendennis Castle, and also traveled from parks to Broken Hill non-stop, setting the record for the longest non-stop journey ever undertaken by a steam engine. Upon returning home in December 1989, Flying Scotsman became the first steam engine to circumnavigate the globe. The engine continued to make history as the most famous steam engine in the world, eventually being bought by the National Railway Museum in 2004 after the bankruptcy of the last owner, Tony Marchington, who purchased the locomotive from McAlpine in 1996. In 2005, the engine was taken out of service for an overhaul and restoration that ended up lasting a decade longer than anticipated due to funding issues combined with multiple parts being found as completely beyond repair or in terrible condition. But since January 8, 2016, Flying Scotsman has been running under its own power, making trips across the main line and visiting several small heritage railways and branch lines, bringing thousands of people who look forward to seeing the engine in its element. As of the 24th of February 2023, and as of the time I'm publishing this video, Flying Scotsman is now in Scotland celebrating its 100th birthday, and the rest is history to be made.
A full century has passed since Flying Scotsman rolled out of Doncaster, and in those 100 years, the world and society has changed and evolved, and Flying Scotsman changed with it. The locomotive we've come to know and love has seen and done many things, and has changed aesthetically and mechanically so much in the span of only a century. But what if we can turn back time to the very first day, the day before diesels ruled the main line, the day before streamlined steam engines were setting records for steam traction, the day when the only way air travel was comfortable was by Zeppelin. The day when George V was king. The day when the only way for innovation, inspiration, and progress to go was up, with no economic crisis or world war to bring them down. The day when it seemed peace was restored to the world after the horror of the Great War. The day where brilliant minds like Sir Nigel Gresley flourished. And the day when the only way to get from London to Edinburgh in the fastest time was by this one train, the Flying Scotsman. We would see the engine not as 60103, a cherished and beloved century-old museum piece, but as 4472, the brand new flagship of a working, living, breathing railway. And the fastest steam engine on Earth. If one could go back to the days in the Roaring Twenties, we would be able to experience Flying Scotsman in its element as Sir Nigel Gresley's first pride and joy. As the engine celebrates its 100th birthday this year, I can only salute the illustrious Flying Scotsman, a long-lived, well-traveled, and without a doubt, the most famous engine of all. Godspeed, Scotty. And a happy birthday to you.